Time of Flight Mass Spectrometer A-Level Chemistry. Time of Flight Mass Spectrometer, this is a kind of an instrument that can be used to measure the relative masses of atoms and of a molecule. There are four stages that we can see in the time of flight mass spectrometer and can be represented in the diagram we see here. So first of all, in the mass spectrometer, the atoms or the molecules have to be ionized to give you positively charged ions, as we can see, and they have different masses, so they have different sizes, and then they are accelerated, and then they start to drift through the time of flight tube, and finally they, re they reach a detector and they will give you what we call a mass spectrum. So let's have a closer look at the different stages of the uh, mass spectrometer and to understand how it works. So as we said, there are four stages. The first one is the ionization, where as you can see here in stage one, all the atoms or all the molecules will change from being neutral into being positively charged. And then the second stage is the acceleration here, where the different ions will be accelerated through an electric field and they will gain kinetic energy. And then the third stage is the ionic drift. Ionic drift here means the different ions will start to move um, at a different speed. And so they will be kind of separated based on their um, mass. And then the far, uh, final stage is the detection where the different um, ions uh, will reach the detector at different speed at different time and they will be detected and will, a mass spectrum will be generated at the end. So let's have a look at the ionization. There are two ways of ionizing your sample. The first one is called the electrospray ionization. In electrospray ionization, the sample is dissolved first and then it passed through a nozzle at high pressure and a high voltage is applied. When a high voltage is applied, the particles will gain hydrogen ions which means that the sample will turn into a gas made of positive ions. The positive ions will all have the hydrogen ion. The second type of ionization is called the electron impact. The electron impact in the sample is vaporized and an electron gun is used to fire high energy electrons at the different particles or uh, of the sample. Here with the electron gun, the electron, these electrons which are fired at the sample will have high energy and they can knock of one electron from each particle. So the particles now will have a positive charge because one electron is knocked off or because they lack one electron now. So they're going to have a positive charge, but they're not going to have the hydrogen ion with it. The second stage is the acceleration. In the acceleration, now we generated the positively charged ions. The positively charged ions are accelerated by an electric field here. And the, all the charged particles will have the same kinetic energy. So the lighter ones will move faster than the, um, the heavier ones. And then the third stage is the ion drift. In the ion drift, the positively charged ions will enter a region with no electric field. This is the time of flight tube, and the ions will just drift through the tube. Lighter ions will drift through faster than the heavier one. As we can see here now, the uh, lighter ones are um, move faster, so the, you can see them reaching the detector faster and, than the heavier one, and they move at different speeds. And finally, the detection. So the lighter ions move faster at a higher speed, and they reach the detector faster. The detector will detect the charged particles and a mass spectrum is produced. Um, how is the detector going to uh, detect the different ions? An electric current is produced in the detector when a charged particle hits it. 
So this is the mass spectrum that is generated at the end of the process. As we can see in the mass spectrum, there is the x-axis and there is the y-axis. So this is the mass spectrum of magnesium, for example. The x-axis represents the m over z, or what we call the mass over charge. So it will give you the mass of the particle divided by the charge. And because the charge is always plus 1, so mass over charge will equal the mass of the particle. And the y-axis is the relative abundance of the different ions, which are represented with as a percentage. The height of each peak will give you the relative abundance of that isotope in case of elements. So elements have different isotopes, and each isotope have a different um, has a different mass. So the mass over charge of different isotopes will give you different peaks and the height or the intensity or the relative abundance of each will represent the abundance, the natural abundance of that particular isotope. So remember, there are two types of ionization. We said there is the electron impact and there is the electrospray. In the electron impact, the ions are generated by knocking off one electron, which means the particles simply um, lose one electron, so they have the exact same mass. There is no change of the mass. So the mass of our charge value that we find here will equal the mass of the particle. However, in the electrospray, ions are generated by gaining hydrogen uh, ion or by gaining a proton, which means the value of the mass of our charge, if it's electrospray, is going to be one unit higher or greater than the mass of the particle. So uh, what do we use the mass spectrum for? So we can use it to work out the relative atomic mass of an element. So we can calculate the relative atomic mass based on the relative abundance of their isotope in the mass spectrum. For example, this is the mass spectrum of boron. And we can see that there are two peaks here, one at 11 and one at 10. The relative intensity is 100 for the boron 11, and that's 23 for the boron 10. This is the relative abundance. And you can calculate the relative atomic mass by simply multiplying the mass of the um, isotope 11 uh, by um, the relative abundance of uh, boron 11 plus the mass of boron 10 times the relative abundance of boron 10 divided by the total abundance of all isotopes. So it's going to be one, uh, 11 times 100 plus 10 um, times the 23 for the isotope 10, and it's all divided by 123, which is the total of the relative abundance 123. When you find the value here, you can compare it with the one in the uh, periodic table, and you're going to find that it's almost the same. Mass spectrum can be also used, um, a spectrometer can be almost, uh, also be used to identify elements. So elements with different isotopes uh, produce more than one line in the mass spectrum, as we have seen before with magnesium and with boron. So because isotopes have different masses, so this is the mass spectrum for magnesium, the, um, this will produce a characteristic pattern that can be used as a fingerprint to identify the element. So if you produce a mass spectrum of an element and you find three peaks here, as we can find uh, at 24, 25, 26, with a relative um, abundance of 79 to 10 to 11. So that means this is uh, the fingerprint uh, spectrum for magnesium. So you can go and compare it with the different elements to identify your particular element. And finally, mass uh, spectrometer can be used to uh, spectrometer can be used to identify molecules. So, in case of molecules, uh, so because particles can be elements and it also can be molecules, and it can be ionized in the same way, either electrospray or with um, the electron impact. So um, now. The positively charged particles for the molecule, the M+, plus, uh, is produced when an electron is knocked off uh, a molecule. This is called the molecular ion. 
the peak given for which has the mass over a charge for the molecular ion for the positively charged um, particles or for the positively charged molecule will equal the relative molecular mass of that particular molecule this can help to identify an unknown molecule for example this is the mass spectrum for methanol and methanol for, for compounds you're going to see more than one peak but we will focus on the molecular ion peak which represents the mass of the uh, whole molecule which is positively charged. This is going to be the peak at the far right with the highest mass uh, because the others are fragments. So the mass spectrum, spectrum of methanol, the molecular ion peaks will give you the uh, m over z or um, the mass over charge value of 32 and the relative molecular mass of methanol is um, 32. So so when you look at this mass spectrum, you can identify that actually what you have here is methanol.